So for our next piece, we have to remember the style that Rossini wrote when he was composing operas. Remember, his was opera buffa, meaning it was comedic in nature, very relatable for the people who were all around. So it was nothing fancy, just very popular, all right? There's a difference between fanciness and popularity. You can have very simple things, but have a lot of people that love it. You can have absolutely complex things, but no one really wants to hear it. For example, like when it comes to jazz musicians, they do some of the most complicated things, but I bet none of you can even name for me three jazz musicians, but you can name for me like 10 pop stars who'd use very simple chord progressions when it comes to the music. And because of this, he actually received hate from Beethoven. Beethoven ended up saying Rossini would have been a great composer if his teacher had spanked him on the backside. That's coming from Beethoven, Ludwig van Beethoven. So this didn't really bother Rossini and in the next six years he wrote 16 more operas. Too much in such a short time. But the question is how did he actually do this? How was he able to write so many? Now we have to remember that back in that in those days, transport and moving around was deaf was a luxury, especially for the common man. The common people would not travel around. They were born in this city, they would work in the city, marry in the city, die in the city, be buried in the city, and that was the portion for the children onwards. It was the aristocrats and the higher the people higher up in society who would get to move around and travel and get to see different areas. So he was part of this class because of his fame and the success that he was given. And because of that, he would be invited from one opera house to another. So you could have a Venetian opera house, then you could have another opera house in Nap Napoli, or you could have another opera house in Rome that would be calling you up and asking you, hey, come perform an opera for us, come write an opera for us. And so what he would do is he would reuse ideas that he used in this opera house and use it in this opera house and take something else he made in this opera house and use it in another opera house. So he was reusing melodies a lot. But the thing is, no one ever knew. Why? Because... No one could move around and see, oh, when I went there in Rome, he was performing this. When I went here in, in Pesaro, he was performing this. When I went here in Napoli, he was performing this. The people had no clue because they would just remain where they were. He knew and maybe the other rich people that would follow him around knew. But this wasn't really a problem. It was just the way things were done. No one really cared. It was just entertainment. So our second piece is about a girl who was accused of theft and acquitted when the truth comes out that it was actually a pesky little bird. One interesting fact about this piece is Rossini was so late in writing the music for this that the producers actually locked him up in a room and said he would not come out until he finishes, finished this piece. So he was just busy writing, throwing out pieces of paper out of the window just in time for rehearsal. Go ahead and listen to our next piece, The Thieving Magpie, and have and try and visualize as to how the music is actually telling a story, like how it starts off nice and jolly, some, it feels like someone's walking through a street, then all of a sudden it feels like something is flying around, then something grave happens and people notice, and things start to take a grave turn, until finally in the end, uh, things to end on a light note. So try and visualize these things as you listen to the music. It's not just there to, oh, it's, it sounds interesting. Like be able to visualize and see how it, the melodies are telling a story. 